Hello, I'm Dane, and this is Dane Explains. With the most recent development of the leaked draft from the Supreme Court, I've been making a few videos on the issue of abortion. Besides the my body, my choice argument, the second one I've often heard is a clump of cells doesn't have rights. This argument is a good quick thing to quip back when someone responds, it's not your body, because it kills two birds with one stone. Even if it's not part of their body, it's not a human anyway, so it doesn't have any rights. At what point do you go from just part of the mother or something invading your mother to a human being? Let me explain. I already talked about what is and is not the body of the mother and the fetus, and also the ethics of aborting a fetus after you've already considered a person. Those videos are linked in the description. Today, I'd like to talk about something related to both of those. From the perspective of a molecular biologist, when do you become a human? There are philosophical arguments to be made about who's actually making the definition, and does it matter? I mean, legally speaking, you can declare anything is or isn't a human. I think that most would agree that, let's face it, that doesn't really change reality. You don't suddenly declare that an eggplant is a human and therefore deserves all the rights a human has and then expect that something is going to fundamentally change with the eggplant. Hey, so we're going to stick to the science. Most people who would call themselves pro-abortion would say that a human becomes a human once it reaches the point it can survive outside the womb. There are lots of other points as well, which I'll go over. In spite of the push from the certain politicians, support for abortion after the point of fetal viability, which usually happens around 24 weeks or about 6 months, drops way off, with a slight majority of Americans saying it should be banned in all cases. The people who support abortion at that stage for any reason adhere to the idea of it's in there, so it's fair game. This doesn't really hold too much water, however, because if the fetus can survive outside of the womb, then it's got everything it needs to be considered a human by definition. Just using logic, it makes sense if you have all of the faculties and functionality of a human, you are one. Which is probably why not many people condone abortion after that point. I'm just going to gloss over this here, since I already hit these points in my two other videos, but the human womb isn't some magical place whereby just being there, you cease to be human. It would be like trying to solve the problem of traffic deaths by saying any human found inside of a car isn't human. Therefore, if they died in a car, it's not a human traffic death. Moving on, what about before 24 weeks? Well, the thing about that is, the line isn't actually well defined. Although there is increasing difficulty, the babies can often survive outside the womb for a time before that. Even more than that, some babies have survived indefinitely, being born as early as 21 weeks. So, just because a baby is born weak doesn't mean it can't survive. Some might say, well, yeah, then just push the legal abortion to then, when they definitely aren't viable. Well, that's a moving target. With better technology, babies are surviving at younger and younger ages. I don't think anyone would say a baby at 21 weeks in the womb in 1950 was less of a human than a similar baby in 2022 just because they didn't have the tools back then for it to survive. There are new emerging technologies like artificial wombs that could push this back even further, possibly all the way back. So whatever point of pregnancy you pick, it may eventually be wrong. So it's pretty clear, logically speaking, the use of fetal viability to define what is human and what isn't is an arbitrary one and soon may go all the way back to conception. The other kinds of definitions you can use, besides fetal location and fetal viability to define if it's a human, is fetal development. How developed is the fetus? Does it have enough parts to be human? Another definition people like to choose is the detection of a heartbeat. That's usually around 12 weeks of pregnancy. The thing is, just because you can't detect it doesn't mean it's not there. Your heart starts beating at 22 days of gestation, while well, you're still an embryo. Also, many people have survived for quite some time without a heart or a heartbeat and are still alive today. 
That state didn't make them magically not human for a time, and then human again. When they got a heart, much to the chagrin of even pro-lifers, heartbeat is just as arbitrary, if not more arbitrary than fetal viability. The other big model some people like to select is brainwave detection. Well, if you just listen to my talk about heartbeat, you'll be able to see where this is going. How in the heck do you expect to accurately detect brainwaves of a moving target through the uterus, abdominal wall, fat, and skin? You can assume by the time you can detect it, it's been there for a long time. In fact, the synapses start working at just five weeks of gestation. Many mothers don't even know they're pregnant yet. Science will never be able to pin down the exact moment you become self-conscious, because it develops with time and peaks when you're in your late 20s. Yes, I said peaks because it declines as you age. So you literally have to pick some arbitrary point or some other arbitrary metric to decide what's a human. Once fertilization happens, what's called a zygote forms. It's a single cell with the same complete unique genome the adult person will have. The human zygote, given the proper starting conditions, namely a human womb, will develop continuously until it's in its mid-twenties, at which point it starts to decline. It doesn't even have to be in the womb of its genetic mother. So when do you become human? Think of starting a fire with a foot and seal. The first thing you do is set up the proper conditions to start and maintain the fire when it's really tiny. You get a pile of moss or some other dry material and you shoot a spark inside. After the fire starts, you protect it from the harsh wind, all the while gently blowing on it to feed and grow it. Once it's ready and the fire is stable enough, you start to add kindling until finally it's a large fire, easily burning on its own. At what point did that fire become fire? The moment the spark formed when the metal hit the flint? When the spark ignited the moss? When you first spotted it inside the moss with your eye? When it consumed most of the moss? Or when it was able to jump from the moss to the kindling? Scientifically speaking, the fire existed the moment that hot spark hit the fuel in the moss and started setting off a self-sustaining chain reaction. It may start small, but as long as it's nurtured and protected from being snuffed out, the fire doesn't die out. Before you know it, the fire will be warming and sustaining the very person who ignited it. So, when does a human become a human? Conception. Picking any other point just doesn't make scientific sense. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please press the like button. Subscribe to my channel and ding the bell to get notified when I post new videos. Also, please support me on Patreon, link in the description. The more people support me, the more time I can dedicate to making videos like this one. So, until next time, have a great week.